in just a few minutes our class is going to be dismissed. Before we do that, I ask the Brother Jim if you would to pass these cards out for me. Please excuse the dates on these. They are from a few years back. We're going to be there in the message this morning looking at our Christmas for Christ DVD. I know our, some of our teachers will be out, so they won't be able to see those. I want to go ahead and get these cards out this morning before our classes were dismissed. And with the teachers had an opportunity to also participate in the giving of that. Who's excited for what's coming up in the next few weeks? You know, Christmas is a, a time that we gather together with family, we open presents. But do we really take time to really think about the real reason? Do we really sit there and just think, you know, what if God had come to this earth? What if he hadn't come so that we could be saved? We won't be able to hear this gospel message that we preach. It's something so amazing. It's just, it's wonderful. There's nothing, you will never feel anything else like it in this world. How many of you agree with that? This morning, um, our kids are going to be dismissed to their classes. This morning, I just want to talk for a few minutes about how God gave everything for us. You know, He He came for all mankind. Brother Manuel, if you will put Acts chapter 10, verse 34 through 36 up there for me. If you did not receive a card, please see me afterwards and I can get you one of those. I'm not sure how many we would need this morning. Acts chapter 10, verse 34, starting there and reading through verse 36. It says that Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace, through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. This morning, just for a few minutes, I want to talk on God is not a respecter of persons. That's right. In the scripture, you see that God loves every single person in the whole entire world. It doesn't matter what nationality, skin color, what ethnic background they are, or which side of the tracks they grew up on, or how they were raised. God loves them. In the Bible, some thought that the gospel was only for the Jews. But in Romans, we see a little bit differently. Romans chapter 3, verse 29 says, Or is he called the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. That shows you right there that God wasn't just for one select group of people. You know, it's, it's kind of funny sometimes how you, you perceive a church. You know, in some areas you have a church that's all white. Some churches you have a church that's all Hispanic. You have another church that's all black. But I believe that a church should have all kinds of people. From all kinds of nationalities. 
The church my parents attended back in North Carolina, they have All Nation Sundays. Every once in a while, and on those particular Sundays, they represent each nation in their church that is there. I think the last time they did it, they had about 21 different nations that were represented in that one service alone. God is for everybody. In John 3.16 it says that for God so loved the world that he became his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't say he came just for the Jews or the whites or the blacks or the Hispanics. No, he didn't see out a single race of any kind. He said the world, for God so loved the world. Not just a fraction of it. Not just Asia or North America. But the whole world. Now, when Jesus came to the earth, he preached to everybody. He talked to everybody. And he was criticized for it. He was criticized for sitting down with people to eat that weren't Jewish. But you know what? Jesus did what nobody else was willing to do in that day. The Jews and the Gentiles, they weren't supposed to, to eat together. They weren't supposed to do anything like that. But you know what? That didn't stop Jesus. Because his message was for the whole entire world. He didn't care what the people thought of him. Because he came to spread that gospel to everybody. He came to, to show the, the people over in Africa, the people over in China, Japan, Europe. They can hear that same gospel that we hear. They can know that same truth that we know. Next Sunday is our Christopher Christ, the actual offering date. But I thought it went very well with my message this morning. The next Sunday is when we usually will pledge for our Christmas for Christ to help our North American missionaries start new churches. We received a phone call about the Christmas for Christ from one of our brethren down in South Bend. Indiana alone still has 15 counties that still do not have an apostolic church in it. 15. Those are people in that cities, those counties that need God. Yes. That they need to hear that the Lord came for them. That the Lord loves them. That doesn't matter who they are or what they are. But that God loves them and wants to see them in the house of God. I want to take just a few minutes right now. I think it's about nine or ten minutes long altogether. The three different videos that we want to show you this morning. Brother, if you can go ahead and put that up there for me. While you're looking at these videos this morning, be thinking about what you're wanting to give to Christmas for Christ this year. It may not be able to be much, but whatever you give can, can help. Brother Ben, will you grab the front lights for me? Go ahead and hit that first one there, brother. This is from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. The moment I walked in, I was like, this is home. I knew deep in my spirit, and I had just met, met Grace at the bottom of the stairs, but no one had hardly said two words to me, and I knew I was home. I hadn't received <coughs> that the Holy Ghost yet. Um, so we came to church on Sunday, and we were praising. 
um, during praise and worship, and I was just praying for freedom. And whilst I was praying for freedom, I found myself praising God that I was free, and I was really excited. It was such an amazing feeling, and that's when I, I received the Holy Ghost during the service, just like that. Hi, my name is Justin McKenzie, and I'm Dan McLeod. We are church planners in the city of Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's a beautiful place on the east coast of Canada, home to about 470,000 people. We're thankful for what God is doing, seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. Being here, it was it was very st st strange, I guess, in some ways, because everyone is praying aloud at the same time, and then people are praying in tongues, and in my mind, I'm like, I can't hear my prayer, because all I can hear is everybody else praying, and it's distracting me. She came, I could sense the hunger in her, and she was going to an Anglican church, so I said, okay, I'm not going to push her, but I saw the hunger, I saw this openness, I saw this desire, and I said, I know Pentecostal church is a little different from you. For you, it's not something you've heard of, but I'm going to this great church and you should come. And she, such a sweetheart, she said, okay, I'll come check it out. And you know, she came and she enjoyed the experience. And afterwards she said, it was great, but I'm not yet ready for it. So she kept going to her Anglican church and I, and I, I was okay with that because I didn't want to push her. Um, and eventually she gave it. My pastor said, um, that's great, she, and now you, you, you can also be baptized. And <laughs> I was very, very against that, and I insisted that my baptism when I was three months was exactly the same thing that was going to happen. And so there was no need. But I guess in a, in a moment alone with God, a week later, I realized that I just I needed to be obedient and so that's when I, I got baptized in the name of Jesus. God has really strategically placed this because we're impacting uh, people groups, cultural groups. We're getting a feel for the city that we never would have got. We're a very multicultural city. Even in our own church there are, are several cultures on a given Sunday morning. We have more uh, universities and colleges per capita than anywhere in Canada. Justin McKenzie and Dan McLeod came to Fredericton, New Brunswick as Bible College students. Both of them worked as summer interns at Capital Community Church, where I'm privileged to pastor. And then Pastor Justin actually worked with our youth ministry for a couple of years. Now with their families, they've both gone to Halifax, Nova Scotia, to start a wonderful young congregation in the metro area. One church has not been without its challenges or struggles, but to watch the progress of a brand new church has been a thrill for our congregation to help them and assist them in taking the gospel to Metro Halifax. And so I want to thank you for giving to Christmas for Christ because it's because of your help that I'm standing here. It's because of your generous hearts that my life has been changed and touched by the love of God and by the love of amazing people. So thank you. Uh, sometimes we put our money in the uh, offering. Uh, we don't see exactly uh, where it's going, but just try to imagine um, your money being invested directly into a home missions church in some city across North America, and that's always tied to a testimony, people that have been born again, people that have had their life turned around as a direct result of your giving. Thank you for giving to Christmas for Christ. You just met Romney. She came to North America for education. Her ambition is to eventually be the president of her home country of Zimbabwe. The ambitious ladies who you have met by this video really got more than education in Halifax. They found Christmas for Christ missionaries right in downtown urban Halifax. Is it worth what any of us give for people like Chi to have a chance to be born again? Knowing the people of the churches I'm talking to, I believe that you're totally committed to the idea that it's worth the investment. On a given Sunday, over 12,000 people will attend a church just like the one in Halifax that is being established by Dan and Justin. Your Christmas for Christ offering is most assuredly making a difference. Imagine in heaven you meeting 
Rumbi, the Chi, and knowing that your sacrifice to Christmas for Christ helped them to be there. It's easy to be part of Christmas for Christ. Just give your biggest Christmas gift to Jesus. Whether you spend a little or a lot, just give Jesus the biggest gift of all. The results are clear. It is worth the sacrifice to give your biggest gift to Christmas for Christ. pastor and so I use it as a way to reach out um, I'm a loan officer and so I felt like I had to go to a certain company so I worked it out and uh, the wife Heather uh, started working with me and uh, then we decided to team up as loan officers and, and work together and in the process she began to ask me about God and, and church and since joining Landmark Family Church, I have found a new family. I have found a sense of peace and rejuvenation. And what I have found here is a greater closeness with my family, uh, spiritually, and it feels good coming here every uh, Wednesday and Sunday. And witnessing my daughter get the Holy Ghost today was pretty awesome. I, I can't describe it, but it, it was great. You know, it made me feel, I guess, uh, weak, kind of, you know. But it, it was awesome to witness that it really was. I think we have a great church. If I was looking for a church in St. Louis and Maryland Heights, this is the type of church I would look for, a place that is welcoming, a place that is diverse. Um, it really doesn't matter what you look like or what language you speak. When you come to Landmark Family Church, you feel that. <laughs> It's a very good church, and I want other people to know about this church because it's a very good church. We all have a common goal to grow this church, and it will grow. People have no idea how powerful and what they're missing out on. And, you know, I see us in a different building that is going to be more welcoming to the public, and um, others will get to experience what we've experienced. All of us are here because someone invested in us, someone believed in us. And I'm grateful for the Advent Pentecostal Church, grateful for the North American Missions Division, grateful for everyone that has just believed in us. We're expecting great things, and I wouldn't want to do it alone. Thank God that we have people that are in the trenches with us, that are praying and fasting, and that's why God is breaking the chains, and that's why God is tearing down strongholds. That's why miracles and phenomenal things are happening here in St. Louis. I would like to encourage everybody to participate in Christmas for Christ. At Christmas time, we feel the pressure to purchase everybody gifts. And you have nieces and nephews and children, everybody that you want to buy a gift for. But the most precious gift that we can give back is helping people find their way in the church. And thus far, we need to have more churches like the Edinburgh Family Church so that we can really give that ultimate gift. This Christmas, please give your biggest gift to Jesus. The Pick family are a testament that it is worth the sacrifice. Whether you spend a little or a lot, just give your biggest gift to Jesus. Thank you for giving to Christmas for Christ. This last video that we're going to watch here is a little bit about the history of Christmas for Christ. I was frustrated with Christmas. We worked so hard to put all the decorations up and 
shopped from one store to another for bargains, wrapped it all up, spent hours and hours and all the money we had and some we didn't have. And uh, then as soon as Christmas is over, we tore the wrapping up, threw it away, burned the Christmas tree, and it was all over and you took your vacuum out and cleaned the rug and you were just so glad it was all over. And one year, I told my wife, this is not right. There's something wrong about Christmas. I shouldn't feel frustrated about it. We're missing something. And that's when the Lord gave me the idea to uh, take Christmas money. And so I sat down with my family, had four children, two of them very small. And uh, the older ones were, uh, one was in their early teens and the other was younger. And I said, now we want to put some of our Christmas money that we would receive in the Christmas uh, in, in a missions fund and give it to the missionaries. And uh, my wife said, well, if you can have mine. And I said, well, they can have mine. And my two older kids said, well, we'll give half of ours. So that's what we did. And I told the church about it. I thought this is too good to keep. And they picked up on it. So I promoted it. And that year we had a thousand dollars from this small church and it was a sacrificial offering. And one other church heard about it over in the scene and they did the same thing. And then we started that every year. And my wife and I uh, have never bought each other a gift since. Because when we build churches in North America, we actually uh, bless churches all over the world. Because out of these churches come your foreign missionaries also. Christmas really became meaningful in my life when I put Jesus in it. For years, we had programs about him, plays, we sang songs about him, but we really gave him nothing at Christmas time. But when God dealt with me about putting money in the work of God because of Jesus' birthday, it brought a great blessing in my life. In the first Christmas we did that, when we opened the gifts, there weren't many gifts, but the presence of God was so real. My wife and I began to weep in the presence of God. That's a very precious place to be. And people don't deliberately do it, but they ignore it. And one of the greatest things that people can contribute to is starting churches, funding missionaries, funding the causes to reach North America through all kinds of avenues and outreaches. Christmas for Christ is an offering received by churches all across North America. Its purpose is to assist church planners fulfill Christ's mission. This Christmas season, join with many others and give your greatest gift to Christ, for His mission truly is our mission. service today will take up our cards and the offering won't have to be in until the end of January. As you can see, it doesn't matter where you're at. Whether you're in Canada, whether you're in America, it doesn't matter because God is for everybody. When we help our missionaries in North America, we're not just spreading God's love on our soil, but also to the other countries, as you heard Brother Yant say. You know, God wants everybody to live for Him. He wants everybody in the world that can, that will, to live for him. He chose to come and seek and to save those that were lost. He came to earth to preach the gospel so that everybody can know him. 
When a church is started in places that don't have one, those other people get the opportunity to learn about God's love. They get a chance to live for God in, in such a mighty way that they've never imagined before. But then you have people that say, well, if God loves me, then why is he letting this happen to me? Why did he let this or that happen? Why, why am I going through what I'm going through? But you know what? God lets us go through things sometimes so that we can grow deeper with him. So that we can learn to trust him with everything. So that he can be given that chance to show us that he really does care for us. And one of the Ten Commandments says, love thy neighbor as thyself. It means we have to love each other no matter what their nationality is. God did it. Why can't we? If you've been watching the news lately, you've seen all the riots and things that have taken place over the grand jury decisions in the two different cities. But you know, those are people that need God too. God still loves those people. He doesn't like what they're doing, but He loves them. There's things in the Bible that God mentions that he hates. Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 19, it says, These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Nowhere in those verses do you find that God says he hates those kind of people. He loves the people, but he hates the sin. Right. Right. We've been commanded to show God's love to the world in the scriptures. John chapter 13, verse 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. God loved everyone so much. And he wants his people to do the same. When we have new converts going to our churches, they need to feel God's love. They need to know that, hey, you know what? God loves you and so do we. We don't care about your past. We don't care where you came from. That's right. Yes. All we care about is showing you that God loves you. When we get to missions, we're enabling other preachers to start churches in places that don't have them. We're enabling preachers to, to go and to spread that word that, hey, God loves you. God wants you. You see all the old built the old posters from the old days when they were doing the when the wars were starting. And Uncle Sam had this finger point that says, I want you. But you know what? God's doing that same thing today. He's saying, I want you. I want you. I want that guy down the street down there that sits on the corner and begs all day. Come on. That's right. Yes, he does. I want that dry guy that's sitting down there wasting his life away. Yes. I want everybody, no matter what they look like. Yes, I came from a city that 
the, the white people were a minority. There was more black and Hispanics than there were the white people. But you know what? That doesn't matter. There could be one white person in the whole entire community of Hispanic or black people. But that one white person would still get along with everybody in that whole entire group of people. Why? Because that's the way God intends it to be. That's the way God wants it to be. He doesn't say, hey, shun this group over here because we ain't going to talk to them. But no, he says, hey, go out. Have them come in. Preach the gospel to them. They deserve to see God too. They deserve every opportunity that we have to worship God. We have some new church cards on the front table out there. I changed the wording a little bit on there from what they used to say. They said, experience God's love and all the other things that were saying there. I want to do a new slogan for our church. And I put it on that business card. Connecting you with Jesus. Because that's what we're about. That's right. Yes, it is. We're about connecting people with God. Right. That's right. Right. You can get on Facebook and you can connect with friends that you've lost along the way. Really, that's the only way I have to find out what's going on back home is because of Facebook. I can go on there and I can connect with the people that I used to know. But you know what? Instead of connecting people with people, let's connect them with Jesus. Over this next year, it doesn't matter what they look like, where they came from. Come on. It doesn't matter if they're a drug addict. It doesn't matter if they're a drunk. It doesn't matter if they're homeless. Right. Come on. Right. They still need Jesus. Yes. And if we can't do that, why are we here? That's good. Come on. If we can't witness to anybody out on the streets, why are we here? That's right. These churches that get started, they may only have one or two people to begin with. It may just be the pastor and his family. But that pastor goes out, he knocks doors and he witnesses the people. He gets somebody to come. He connects them with Jesus. Then they go out they find their friends and they do the same. They connect them with Jesus. Who's willing to connect someone with God today? He is for everybody. He wants everybody to know that, hey, I came to this earth. I died on that cross for you. I rose again three days later. To prove a point that I am God, that I can do all things. Our God is so great. He loves everybody. You hear people say all the time, well, nobody loves me, everybody hates me. Next time somebody says that to you, look at him and say, well, God loves you. He's somebody. See what their reaction is going to be. They might be taken aback. What, what, do you, what do you mean? There's your opportunity right there 
Tell them about the love of God. Our God is so awesome. Can we stand right now? As I said, we're going to take our pledge cards here in a few minutes. I want to give you a time, a little bit of time to pray about them right now. It doesn't have to be much. Whatever you feel led to give. Whatever you feel God is saying, hey, give this. And let me tell you something, you cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive Him in any form. Can we just take a moment right now just to ask God to, to lead us and guide us right now? Lord, I pray, O God.